All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm the one and only Douglas Habian. This is a name that in time you probably will come to know very well. And in this video, we are picking up where we left off in the previous video. We used a program called Belena Etcher on a Linux distribution. And we used Belena Etcher to flash the Dragon OS ISO to a USB stick. And this is what it looks like at the end when you are done, gives you the option to flash another, lets you know the flash was completed. Very simple, very straightforward. We're gonna X out of this. And now we're gonna remove the USB stick from the uh, laptop. Let me make sure that it's not mounted before I do that. And if it is mounted, let me run LSBLK real quick and see. Okay, so it's not mounted, and I know that because right here it was uh, sitting on dev SDB. And if it was mounted over here on the right side, it would be showing me where at in the file system that it was mounted. And you could also find this out just by um, clicking on one of the GUIs like the the file manager and hovering over the icon for the USB stick and it'll tell you if it was mounted or not. I typically just use LSBLK. If it were mounted, we would have wanted to properly unmount it. Um, so now that I know it's it's not mounted, Belena Etcher made, made sure to unmount it after, after flashing it. I'm going to remove the USB stick from the laptop. And now I am going to put the USB stick in to a laptop that I have uh, right next to this one, specifically for uh, demo purposes. And um, this uh, laptop was pre-configured to be able to boot from a USB stick because you do have to uh, enable certain um, uh, settings in your BIOS. And if you have not done that, I do have uh, previous videos that go into uh, detail about that so and right now the screen is kind of functioning as a mirror um, so you do see me in the reflection there's nothing wrong with that send me some likes you know send me some some positive feedback been working out lately so trying to get you know nice and nice and big for the for the haters and I have plenty of them so we're gonna take this USB stick now we'll put it into the side of the laptop once again this has all been pre-configured um, a, a laptop by default, it's not going to be set up yet to be able to boot from a USB stick. Watch the previous videos. Now, I'm going to power on the laptop and I'm going to press the F9 key. We see that the boot manager comes up on the screen and if all has been done correctly, we should be able to hit enter as it's highlighting the um, general USB flash disk, which is where this Dragon OS ISO is, is sitting right now. We should be able to hit return and we should be brought to um, the uh, a bootloader or something for um, the Dragon OS. Now the Dragon OS works a little differently than some of the other systems that we'll be looking at. Um, so this is good that you're seeing this on the screen in real time. I did not do this in advance so any issues I run in to you're gonna you're gonna see them live and one of the things that is different about the way Dragon OS works um, th that you won't see done with probably any of the other uh, Linux images that we that we work with in this series is before it actually boots up it either automatically will run a check on the file system um, or it will bring you to a menu where it's going to ask you if you do want to, to run a file system check. Um, in this case, I'm going to gonna skip that. I'm not going to check the disk. I'm going to go ahead and click on the top one, which is Boot Dragon OS Live System. And now we should start the process of booting into um, Dragon OS, running on a USB stick. This laptop um, is running Windows 11. Um, I could do this from any lap laptop. It doesn't matter if the laptop is running Windows or Linux. 
as long as you make the correct changes in the uh, bios, um, then you can do this. Doesn't doesn't matter, uh, truthfully, doesn't matter what system the laptop is is running. We're not touching the hard drive, um, so everything that we're doing right now is coming from this one USB stick. And this is a very small USB stick, leaves 32 gigabytes in size. Um, uh, obviously, a 64 gigabyte or something that is bigger and has faster uh, writes is, is going to be even better for this. I'll show you a video where I take a um, SSD drive and I'm able to do the same thing I'm doing here with this USB stick by plugging an SSD drive into the USB port and it works great. It's very fast. Um, it's, it's about as fast as the underlying operating system is on my machine. So we're just waiting for this to boot up and this is taking a little bit probably because it is the, the first time um, I can hit escape and get some uh, messages here in the background. And we see some things happening here with some groups and so forth being created. I'll hit escape and go back. If you didn't know that um, what I just did, this is the splash screen. This is the same for Windows. This is the same for Kali Linux, pretty much any operating system. You're always going to have a splash screen. And it's the same with a phone too. You're, you typically have a splash screen and that's the screen that you look at while the the operating system is booting up in the background. And in the case of um, the laptop, we can always hit escape um, and exit the uh, splash screen and be able to actually see the kernel messages in the background to see what is actually happening. Uh, you might see on a Raspberry Pi, some operating systems running on a Raspberry Pi, they won't even have a, a splash screen. So you by default, we'll see all of the kernel messages scrolling by on the screen very fast. Now, I'm going to pause the video here because it is taking a while. I'm going to give it some time to do what it has to do. and. Uh,